Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Chris Elliott Show. I'm Dave McCulley, joined by our co-host, Zach O'Kelly. Our director today is the lovely Bridget Neisler. Of course, this guy is not only the co-host, but he's the producer of the program as well. Coach Elliott will join us in a few minutes. He'll recap that exciting game, but unfortunately a loss down at Faulkner University. The Cats fall 48-44, to uh, moving their record to 3-5 and on the year 0-2 in the Western Division in the conference. And Zach O'Kelly, obviously, uh, welcome back aboard, but obviously it was, a, it was a strong effort by the Cats. Boy, they played their hard. I know Bridget was texting me and uh, telling me how hard they were playing and playing with their hearts and soul, but uh, unfortunately the second half, we just couldn't stop them enough times. Did a lot of things right on both sides of the ball, but in the end, Faulkner wins it 48-44. to They did. Uh, we were here at the uh, Renaissance Band Competition right. this weekend. We were watching between it and the Alabama game on, on laptop in front of us. Yep. The Cats played very well the first half. The defense was very uh, very well old machine. Got two safeties early. Um, just Faulkner kind of weathered the storm and mind to come back in the second half and got back in the game. And the Cats will have to bounce back in a tough place to play this week when they travel to Lebanon, Tennessee, to take on the Cumberland University of Bulldogs. We thumped them pretty good here last year, 49-14. to We created a lot of uh, the havoc for them, but they turned the ball over six times. That, it, that really uh, enabled us to win big. And when you turn over, turn the ball over that many times, yeah. it's – there's very not much chance you're going to win the game. Sure. So, yeah, it was uh, probably going to be a completely different game story this week. Uh, they were battling some injuries last year, I believe, as well. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens in Cumberland this week. Hard to believe only three games left. You have this game at Cumberland Saturday, and then you have the uh, ball game, the Lindsey Wilson game, coming here on Senior Day on November the 7th. And then the Cats travel to Reinhardt, and pretty well with that loss the other day, it knocks us out of the uh, playoffs. So only three games left for these seniors. That's It's just three games left. Uh, Seems like yesterday we just started the season, sure so, did, yeah. you know. Uh, but it kind of gives our our guys a chance uh, to kind of well, we've talked about it all week to kind of give some of the teams in the higher echelon there battling for the playoff spots now to uh, give them a little headaches. So, well, you know, we still got to get by Bethel. And Coach but, Elliott will not use it as an excuse, but I, I do remind you this is still a very young football team in a lot of areas, playing a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. And to be honest with you, something that he'll not hang his hat on, but that was a really banged-up Wildcat team that went down there, too. Logan DeBowell didn't play. I mean, you look at a lot of other folks, and I'll miss some if I start naming a bunch of names. But uh, you had Ryan White out with uh, a funeral, uh, our thoughts and prayers to he and his family uh, on the loss of his mom and uh, his grandmother. It was his grandmother, my director tells me, so I apologize. But uh, certainly um, a devastating loss there. I'm sure a, a, a matriarch of the family, so Ryan from over in Trenton. But anyway, our, our thoughts and prayers with his family. But still, I, I was talking to the training staff, and of course there's a lot of rules and regulations about what you can say about injuries and not injuries. But I think at one time we had 29 injuries at one time that were injuries that really impacted the football team and I think altogether about 60 people banged up with Nixon and Act and you have that and other teams have it as well but uh, this this Wildcat team really banged up more than most. They are and uh, that's kind of the uh, last couple of years has kind of been the theme for the Wildcat yeah. football team. They, yeah. They've been you know bit by the injury bug. Well I think for example the loss of Jaquel Fitz and the other running backs have played well and, and I'm not knocking anyone at all. Ramers had a big year had 700 yards last year he's going to exceed that this year uh, barring any kind of injuries but he's playing banged up but then you take a you take a player like Fitz that's been out he's, he's not only got the power but he's got the enough speed too that he really adds another dimension to the backfield so anyway those are some of the things that we did want to work in here. Are you ready for your pickums? Oh yeah. How'd you do last week? Six and one. I always notice, folks, when I ask him that, he already knows the answer. He always looks down, you know, like he's, he's really got to think about it. But you, you knew he was six and one. Uh, what's your record overall now for the season? Uh, 39 and eight. 39 and eight. So your goal was to hit the 50 win plateau. You're 11 away with how many games left? 16 games left. 16 games left. Hard to believe the season's wound down the way it is. But let's get right to the, uh, uh, to the subject of matter here. Georgetown has the open date. Reinhardt has the open date, so I'm going to go on record and say they'll both not lose. That's a pretty safe bet right there. Yeah, no, but no doubt about that. I'll agree with you there. There's 10,000 starving comedians in West Tennessee, and I'm trying to be one of them. Uh, let's talk with Faulkner. Let's start with Faulkner, I should say. Uh, the Eagles will fly their way to Kentucky Christian uh, up in um, the Commonwealth, up in Grayson. And on paper, it looks like all Faulkner, but Faulkner has been a little up and down lately. Well, you know, the Faulkner got – Four and three record now. Uh, 
Well, they took a nosedive. They were 3-0, and number three in the country, and then bang. And then we almost knocked them off, too. Well, so they, they've hit a couple bumps in a row. They're kind of rebounding back. You know, yeah. they, but they play a tough schedule, which anybody sure. in the Mid-South plays a tough schedule. So, um, I've got I've got like Faulkner in that game, though. Okay, I, I like Faulkner as well. What's your score? 59-38. Okay. If you've ever been in the Eastern Mountains of Kentucky, you know in Pikeville, we talked about it last week, and I don't mean to be so redundant, but it's the Hatfields and the McCoys. This is about as close as you get to the Hatfields and McCoys union at Pikeville. Barberville over to Pikeville. They don't like each other. It's the old mountain uh, way up there. I'm just going to come knock your block off, and both of these teams like to do that. Not spectacular in what they do, just like to grind it out and just hit you as hard as they can. Union at Pikeville, who do you like? Well, that's going to be a beautiful trip for anybody going up and oh, around here. Oh, it's gorgeous up there this time you know, of year. About yeah. this time of year, the leaves changing. Yeah. So, uh, Union's still looking for that first win this season, uh, still riding the long losing streak. Uh, you know, Pikeville's, they played well here. They've played well a lot of places this year. Yeah. and almost and they gave Campbellsville a scare there at the end they too did. as well so I've got to give Pikeville even playing at home a slight edge there 41-35 41-35 the best I agree with you I think it's uh, going to be a high scoring affair and I think Pikeville will win it some other action it's well, let's, let's skip down here to and not as many games with Reinhardt and Georgetown off but let's look at number 24 Cumberland's another one on paper they're they're in the uh, top 25 uh, they're at Bluefield should win the yeah, number twenty-one team in the country, uh, six and two. They're battling for the. They're with Georgetown for the East. Uh, even traveling to Bluefield, I've got to give them an edge, forty-five twenty. Forty-five to twenty. Of course, we mentioned the Cumberlands. They're number twenty-one this week. Campbellsville's number twenty. Ryan Hart, after beating Lindsey Wilson, moves up to number six, and Lindsey fell down to number eight. So, what was that score again on that? Uh, on the Bluefield game. Yeah. Uh, Cumberlands forty-five, Bluefield twenty. I think that's probably – I would say that's accurate. I'll go with you on that. Uh, you you almost hit our score right on the head down there the other day. We'll get to that in just a minute. The other big ball game, and this is a big one. This is a huge one. You've got number 22, Camasville, at – and I see now in my notes I, I made a, uh, an error here. I'll have to go correct that on the website. But I still had Lindsay at number one. They're actually number – what did I say? Number eight. So how do you like this one? On paper, number eight versus number twenty-two. Number you think 20. Uh, number twenty? Yeah, excuse me. Number but 20. you think it's probably going to be Lindsay at home in Columbia? But these things are so. The teams are so. The proximity is so close. They don't like each other. They hate to lose to each other. I mean, they could have a marble match this afternoon, and there'd be a war. Who do you like in this one? Well, uh, if they had a marble match today up there, you probably they wouldn't have enough people left over after the yeah. uh, ensuing yeah. after the marble match to play a football game this weekend mm-hmm. so that's just the way it is there yeah, that's sure. the way it is with us in Cumberland us yeah. and Martin Methodist yeah, as well sure. and other sports but uh, you know Lindsay after the loss to Reinhardt um, Campbellsville uh, got a powerful passing attack uh, you know looking at the stats they're pretty close they're very close and being Lindsay at home uh, Chris Wells is not going to be happy with me but I, know uh, who, I knew who you were going to pick yeah uh, I've got Lindsay on upset alert. Uh, Campbell's will beat them 34-31. 34-31. Boy, that would be a great game, uh, no doubt, no matter who won it at that uh, kind of score. You really like Campbellsville to come out of this whole thing, don't you? Well, I'm, uh, I've been very impressed with Campbellsville. They, uh, even earlier in the year, I was pretty impressed with them. They started out slow. They're the best team I've seen this year, yeah. That kind of snowball effect since yeah. the first two losses, and they've been <clears> – <throat> Pretty impeccable sense. Now, I, oh, I like that impeccable. They, now we haven't seen Reinhardt, and we haven't seen Lindsey Wilson. Maybe other than Fem and those kind of things. But yeah, Campbellsville is the best team I've seen this year. Well, that leaves us with one game: the Bethel Wildcats will travel to Lebanon to take on the Bulldogs of Cumberland. Who do you like? Well, both teams three and five. Both zero uh, and two in the conference. Both zero and two in the conference. So. Both teams don't like each other too well, too much. So, so you know, it's just a rivalry game for us. So. There's not really a lot of teams in this conference that like each other, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's but, true, uh, though. <laughs> you know, and uh, I think you'll see both teams like to run the ball. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I think I think I'm going to have to give Bethel a slight edge on the road here. Okay. And you'll carry over some of the – High points from last week. I agree with you. That's, that's the same train of thought I'm having. And Bridget Neisler, she feels the same way. So who do you like? And, and what's the score? Excuse me. 38-31, Bethel. 38-31. I'd take that. I'd take a 32-31 to 31 win, as a matter of fact. But I'm thinking the Cats are going to win it, too. And I think it will be a lot of points scored. I'm going to say 37-28, to 28, Bethel Wildcats. 
It'd be a big win for us. It Sets would. you up at four and five. Come home for Senior Day, and then and not looking ahead again, but then you go to Reinhardt and a chance to close out this thing with a with a winning record. It would, and uh, you know the seniors have played have played their hearts out this year. We've seen that on the field. Uh, uh, just you know, hoping the best for them this weekend. And I, you know, I think they'll I think they'll do well this weekend. Yeah, well. I wasn't on the road last week uh, with the Cats. We were actually down in Starkville seeing Kentucky play a night game. The five last words of the national anthem. I can't repeat them here. Uh, on this program on the Chris Elliott Show, and they're not that important anyway as far as um, Bethel Wildcat football is concerned. But uh, I did learn that they still know nothing about basketball at uh, Mississippi State because I had to identify guys that were flashing up on the board that they signed. But anyway, it was it was a fun experience. Football, it's a it's a you know, chance of rain Saturday. Uh, take your raincoat if you're going. If you can't make it, you can, courtesy of the Cumberland University Sports Information Department, there's a couple links, one link for video and audio that's posted on our website. It's on the story on our game notes. And will be also on the uh, schedule bar, which is on the right. And there's a live stat link there as well, so you can follow the game just like that. We have a big weekend here, of course, with basketball, with volleyball and soccer. We've got, uh, let's see, two, three, we've got five things happening here right here on campus this week with uh, that, and we'll have basketball for you this week on Wildcat Vision, uh, and on the radio side on Saturday as well, so uh, we'll tell you more about that. You can read that story on BethelAthletics.com. Whether it be football or whether it be any sport, uh, check out BethelAthletics.com. For our lovely producer and director, in this case, our director, Bridget Neisler, and for Zach O'Kelly and for Coach Chris Elliott, uh, we'll be back with Coach Elliott right after this. Stay with us. This is the Chris Elliott Show on Wildcat Vision. Welcome back, everybody. We hope you enjoyed that segment with Zach O'Kelly, the uh, guru of Pick'em these days. And uh, he's just uh, moving in toward that 50 mark on his uh, Pick'ems of the uh, ball games throughout the Mid-South Conference each week. We're joined now by Coach Chris Elliott here on the Chris Elliott Show. And, Coach, welcome aboard. And, boy, what a wild affair down at Faulkner. We get out to the big lead, and then they come back and beat us 48-44. But what an exciting game. I, I know it would have been more exciting if we'd won that darn thing. But uh, I know you had to be pleased with a lot of things that happened in the game, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, very happy with a lot of the things that happened. Obviously not happy with the end result and some of the things that, you know, caused the end result to be what it was. But, uh, you know, the effort was where it needed to be. And, I mean, there's not ever a question with, you know, our guy's effort. They're going to come out and work. It just, you know, you said to him after the game that it's, you know, it's more than just about that. You know, I mean, you can leave it all on the field, but... You know, it, it takes more than that. You know, you have to be able to execute and do the things that, you know, we need to do to win for 60 minutes. And, I mean, we did it. You know, we did a lot of things really well for a good amount of time, but it just wasn't long enough or didn't make enough plays. You know, it just came down to, you know, making a play here or there that would have made a difference. And, you know, we didn't make enough of them in the end. And not making any excuses at all, but you and I talked last week off camera, off mic. Uh, this is still a relatively young football team in a lot of areas. And you were banged up going down there. It's a lot of injuries too. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we're not, you know, we're not one to hang your hat on, our hat on a ladder sure. full of excuses and yeah. say these are all the reasons why you know we didn't win. We didn't we didn't win because we didn't do enough to win. Right. Um, you know, and we're not going to you know point fingers or you sure. know you know put it on any of that kind of stuff because I mean at the end of the day it takes eleven players and. We at least had 11 on either side of the ball, whatever, right. you know, or special teams and had an opportunity to get it done, and we just didn't finish it. He won't say it, and I totally agree with what he's saying as a coach, but as a broadcaster and a media person, I will tell you, it is a young ball club in a lot of areas, and there was a lot of injuries that uh, – and, and there's injuries with every team this time of the year, but certainly you jump out to the big lead, 32-7, to seven, and uh, so many things went right there. I mean – 
two safeties. You don't see that very often. No, and I mean that was you know kind of a byproduct of good special teams play. Um, you know, we had two punts down down inside the five, and you know one was I think on the one yard line. That was the first safety, and the other one was. You know, I think inside the five, and we were able to get the sack in the end zone as well. So, you know, we saw kind of everything was kind of clicking and, and working the way it should, um, you know, and the defense was working off the special teams and sure. the offense as well, you know, getting good field position in different, you know, situations. So, um, yeah, everything was, you know, coming together, and it just, like I said, just didn't happen long enough. And even after Faulkner came back and took the lead, your kids fought so hard right to the bitter end, didn't they? Yeah, and I mean, you know, there were some missed opportunities and some mistakes we made. You know, I mean, you know, we had the block field goal, but it really shouldn't have even gotten to a fourth down and a block field goal because first, yeah. second, and third, we had chances to score and didn't. You know, and of course, if you put, you know, a touchdown on the board in that situation sure. as opposed to settling for a field goal, you know, I mean, you don't know. You know, right. you can always, you know, do the what ifs and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, when it's over, it's over. We'll put that in the record book, uh, 48-44, Faulkner outlasts us uh, down in Montgomery, and now we turn our attention to uh, the shortest road trip, I guess, other than the Martin game, when you go to take on the arch rivals, the Cumberland Bulldogs. It's been a good series between these two programs through the years. Yeah, and, I mean, of course, you know, that's the closest – team in conference that we yeah. play now and uh you know there's a lot of familiarity there you know in terms sure. of a lot of our guys know you know they know each other i mean some of them have played you know on the same teams in high school right. so um you know so it's kind of i guess if you want to call it that rivalry game it is that both teams three and five both zero and two in the conference and both hungry for a win up in lebanon yeah, and I mean, you know, you know, we had a JV game with them on Monday, and that's uh, an exciting game in the rain. Yeah, I mean, here, it yeah. was, uh, you know, it was a good game, and yeah. uh, you know, I think the Cats did win it, by the way. Yeah, we did twenty yeah. to uh, twenty to fifteen. Yeah, um, but you know, I would anticipate, you know, same type of uh, same type of thing on Saturday. You know, our guys, you know, I'm sure both teams are going to be hungry to go out and play well, and. Uh, you know, hopefully that'll happen. Coach, again, one of those games that uh, one of their weaknesses, apparently on paper anyway, is one of our strengths. They give up almost 270 yards on the uh, ground each mm-hmm. game, and we like to run that football right down people's throats. So that could be advantageous for us. Big effort by the O line. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's you know that's what we're going to try to do. Um, you know, and mix you know miss some pa- mix some passes in there as well. You know, you kind of try to keep people off balance a little bit. But, um, you know, I mean, you know, we're not going to be successful if our offensive line doesn't play well. And, I mean, that's that's the key every week. Sure. Uh, talk about what they do offensively. Let's talk about the Bulldogs on the offensive side. You know, I mean, they, they're a little bit heavier on the run as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they do it a little bit differently. You know, they're a, a spread team. Um, but they run a lot of uh, a lot of run game stuff where they get some people involved via motions and you know move some you know wings and slots you know around to get you know two back type run yeah. um, stuff. So it's going to be one of those games where you really have to you know be alert and pay attention to the formations they're lining up in and motions. It'll kind of key some things, but. Uh, you know, so they like to run the ball. We like to run the ball. So it might be a quick game. Yeah, it could very well be. But uh, weather, some rain, uh, maybe in the area Saturday. But we'll uh, follow that uh, throughout the week as well. What do they do defensively that uh, stands out that uh, impresses you? Well, I mean, their their base defense is a four three. So I mean, you know, I mean, we've seen that already this year a couple times, and they'll adjust it a little bit based on you know what kind of formations we're lining up in. But uh, you know, I mean, it's gonna you know it's a solid defensive unit, and I mean, you know, but you know it's. If we just take care of what we need to take yeah. care of, you know, yeah. we, we should be okay. Can't count on what they did with us, and and we did to them last year. Six turnovers, they turned the ball over six times, and really led to our big forty-nine to fourteen win. Can't count on that, but we'd like to have about five or six turnovers, wouldn't we? Yeah, if we knew yeah. that was going to happen going in, that'd be great. Uh, you know, and I mean, it'd be nice if we, you know, if we can go down there, sure. we can create that. Um, you know, that's not to say that it couldn't happen. I mean, right. you know, I guess we'll, you know, we'll see what happens on Saturday. The loss down at Montgomery uh, pretty well put us behind the eight ball as far as postseason playoff uh, implications and those kind of things. But we have three games left, two on the road, one here at home, senior day on the 7th. And that'll be neat. It's always fun. It's a bittersweet day for you. And I know Lindsay and the entire family and, and, and or the Bethel football family and, and our family as well. Mm-hmm. But um, these three games, you can sort of look at them like playoff games. And let's say, okay, let's, let's end this thing on a positive note let's end with a winning record well yeah i mean that's you know i mean of course we'll take them one week at a time yeah we'll sure take care you know take care of this week first but i mean you know at this point it's a, it's a matter of you know making some noise in the conference and winning some big football games and sending the seniors out on a high note right um you know obviously the season's not going to end the way you know we had hoped it would going into it but you know it's not the end of the world 
Um, but you know, if we can, you know, end on a high note and win these, you know, last couple games, you know, it'll at least be a springboard, I guess, into the off season and send those seniors out on the right, you know, the and right a, way. And a chance, excuse me, coach, a chance for our seniors to close out as the spoilers because I mean, look over in the East. You got Georgetown over there with Cam uh, with the, uh, the University of Cumberland. That mm-hmm. game is probably going to decide the East. Mm-hmm. Then you look at the West. It's topsy turvy. I mean, Lindsay goes to Reinhardt. Reinhardt wins. They still all have each other to play. Some mm-hmm. some key matchups. And Zach O'Kelly gave those picks earlier on, on this week's games. But we could really be a big factor in this thing. And I'm sure there's some eyebrows uh, up in the Lindsey Wilson and Reinhardt area were raised when they saw 48-44 us, although we got beat, going, mm-hmm. uh-oh. This, and they know. They respect Bethel. They know what kind of program we have and what kind of tradition we have. But, I mean, it's it's a fun time to play a little sport with some of these other boys that are fighting for that one and two spot in the in the West, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just yeah, I guess whatever whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. I mean, you know, there. I mean, there will be ramifications, you know, in, sure. in the standings and all that kind of stuff. And of course, you know, there's a lot of people that still have to play a lot of people yet. So, but you know, all we can do is really worry about what we need to do, uh, you know, and, and yeah. put together, you know, put together as you know as solid a performance we can against Cumberland and hopefully come out on top. Now, my guru here, the co-host uh, Zach O'Kelly, he's got he's got Campbellsville being the the king dog when it's all over. He's got Campbellsville beating these other folks, and he thinks mm-hmm. they're the team that's going to come out of the West. But uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Keys for a big win. Well, you know, I mean, defensively, you know, we got we got to be able to step up and and, and stop their run, um, or at least minimize, you know, because I mean that's that's their main thing. Right. Um, you know, and then, you know, not give up big plays in the past game. And, you know, if we can create those turnovers you're talking about, you know, that would be huge as well. Um, you know, special teams, you know, we need special teams to, to be an impact. Um, you know, they were a pretty solid impact the other day, mm-hmm. um, you know, in a lot of positive ways, especially in the field position. Um, so we need some, you know, big plays there. Uh, it'd be, you know, nice if we can get some big returns um, out of that unit. And then offensively, you know, I mean, I think last Saturday was the first game, you know, that we did not turn the ball over, which is huge. Right. Um, you know, so we need to continue that trend, um, take care of the ball, and then, you know, just do the things that we know we're capable of doing the best we can. And, you know, I think things will work out. I'd be remiss, too, not to mention uh, Raymer, another big ball game. Didn't go over 100. He'd been over 100 a couple of games in a row, but wound up with 95 yards rushing, 20 carries. Sellers uh, carry 26 runs for eight, 81 yards and two scores. Quincy had another big game. I know the Jackson Sun's doing a spread on him, I understand. Ran 18 times for 66 yards and two more touchdowns. Sellers had 198 yards in passing as well, so some good balance. And then on the defensive side, well, and Walda caught four passes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam Kell, uh, his mom, one of our official photographers <laughs> this year, uh, caught two passes for 41. And Hunter Smith, another good game with two for 38. Uh, Burns. He had the interception and for return, and then he had 13 tackles, and Terrell Nelson had 10. So there were some individual highlights of that game too. Certainly, yeah. Hopefully we can. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can put some impressive numbers like that together this week too. <laughs> well, coach, let's go up to Cumberland. Let's get a big win, and uh, we'll get that record uh, right there where we want it near the end, not where we want it overall, but mm-hmm. here at the end of the season. And then a chance to come home and play uh, one of the best teams in the um, not only the conference but in the league. I know you're not looking. Uh, past Cumberland, but then you have Lindsey Wilson, then Reinhardt. Mm-hmm. Beautiful setting, hard place to get to, but a beautiful <laughs> setting over there in Georgia. So a chance to close out with three big wins to close the season out. Yeah, well, see if we can get started this Saturday against Cumberland. And I'll see uh, Mr. O'Kelly how his uh, picks, how he stacked up this <laughs> week as well. He's been bragging. He's, uh, he's, he, his goal was to get to 50 wins. He's at 39. You heard that earlier, so we'll wait and see and uh, see if the Cats can come through for him this week. Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. appreciate it. Coach Chris Elliott, our producer director today, has been the lovely Bridget Neisler. She's actually been the uh, director today. The producer is one Zach O'Kelly. For Coach uh, Chris Elliott and for the Chris Elliott Show, I'm Diamond Dave McKelly. Go Cats. So long, everybody.